Hello, everyone. Happy Thursday. And you are live with Jonathan Manis, CEO of Manis Veteran Medical. And I'm coming to you today with another partner talk. And we are always about saving limbs, helping folks with pain. And we are bringing the top edge, you know, cutting edge technology to the VA and to the DOD. And today we have some special guests with us from Tissue Regenerative Technologies. And um, uh, Mr. John Warlick and Dr. David Mullins is here with us, uh, John David Mullins. And uh, they're going to tell everyone about the product. We're going to just have a good conversation and educate you because uh, a lot of people may or may not have heard of this type of technology. We just want you to know about it. So um, I'm going to go ahead and bring them in live to the stream. Hello, team. Hey, thanks for having us on. Good afternoon. Thank you very much. Uh, first, I'd like to start with you, Mr. Warlick. Uh, please tell us a little bit about uh, Tissue Regenerative and, and you know how it all started and, and what the plan is. Oh, gosh, the plan's the hard one. <laughs> We've been doing this since 2005. Uh, we had discovered through our uh, international colleagues, especially in Vienna, uh, everybody's probably familiar with shockwaves, the shockwaves that are used to destroy kidney stones. Back in 2005, we discovered that there's a strong biologic effect, that it's not just a mechanical effect. Everybody else up until 2005 had thought that the mechanism of action of healing for shockwaves was destructive like kidney stones. And so everybody thought that we had to use these high $400,000 devices that caused pain and trauma under the influence of anesthesia that we would target uh, plantar fasciitis and other tendonitis, but it'd be under, in the OR under anesthesia had amazing outcomes, but the mechanism of action that we thought was that we were causing trauma non-invasively with one step back, two step forward. We thought that we had to harm the patient to make the patient better. Uh, and that was all, all in good, except the insurance companies got really frustrated with us because after our first FDA approval, we were charging $6,000 a patient. And so that wasn't making a lot of friends at the insurance companies. So when I restructured, started a new company called TRT at the time, and now we've reconfigured the software of TRT with a recapitalization. We discovered in 2005, our European colleagues, that the shockwave itself was causing the cell membrane to become permeable. And it started a biologic cascade. You did not have to have high energy focused, uh, low energy unfocused shockwaves, which had covered broader amounts of tissue faster, could initiate a biologic response without causing pain, without causing cellular destruction. So we patented that concept. And in 2006 and seven was our first opportunity to work with the VA and the military. We got a $10 million earmark with our partner and current best friend, Senator Max Cleland, who was the head of the VA for many years. He's still our partner and good friend, but he got us a $10 million earmark to do the combat wound initiative at Walter Reed. Uh, Colonel Alexander Stoyadinovich was our researcher and we were able to prove these dramatic results with, with, the, with, the, with the wounded warriors coming back with, with the burns and the horrible uh, the tissue injuries, soft tissue injuries. We had great success in treating these patients from 2007 to 2010 when the earmark, we in, uh, spent the money, several publications came out of that. But the disappointing thing is when we started this business in 2007, the FDA had told us that we had a class two path through the FDA. Uh, which, you know, with our cap rate and everything, we, we thought we'd have 18 months, we'd have our FDA approval, we'd be done, cl clearances. But when the new administration came in, they pushed us back to class three. So ever since 2007 uh, until 2019, we are fighting the FDA. We've been approved worldwide in the standard of care and wound care and pain worldwide since 2006 and seven. But it took us until 2019 to get our first FDA clearance. Our first clearance was for pain and connective tissue activation. And recently we got two more clearances for diabetic foot ulcers as well as burns. So we have um, acute and chronic wounds. We have pain, improved blood supply, connective tissue activation. And so we've been going crazy since 2019. Uh, and in the last two years, we have now, we are used every day by Cleveland Clinic, UPMC, Northwestern, you know, UCSF, the best researchers in the world do this. We're in the, all the big medical centers. Uh, but we, because of our lack of this, we haven't focused on it up to date. We, we have not made the entree into the VAs like we should. I think we've probably sold to three or four VAs, most of them in Texas. But every day, the Los Angeles Lakers just bought the machine for pain. I can give you a testimonial by the, the Dr. Martin O'Malley, the foot and ankle specialist for the, for the NBA. We've treated over 300 NBA players. 
Uh, this last week, we traded LeBron James, Antonio, Anthony Davis. Uh, we're the Indians, the Cubs, the Mets, the Knicks, the, the Nets. So in sports medicine and in all the big medical centers, we are doing an amazing job, but we have not done our homework. And you really, the first opportunity we had to, to, to market on a national basis, basis to, to, this, to this audience. We just didn't know it. And so- Mr. Warren, Maybe Center Medical is always looking for these type of products. So we're always looking for the cutting edge. And I knew by doing the research of all the wonderful things that has been happening since 2019, that you were a perfect fit for our veterans. You're a perfect fit for the DOD. And, uh, you know, the story is yet to be told, but the, the, the outstanding results that are coming out about this product is what I'm so excited about. And now I'm going to bring in Dr. John Mullins to let him tell a little bit about what he saw, you know, firsthand. Dr. Mullins, thank you again. Oh, good afternoon. Uh, I go back about three years with this machine. Uh, first of all, I'm a surgeon, and it's difficult for me to embrace any technology that requires a scalpel. But uh, I also wind up uh, do a lot of plastic. I'm a plastic and reconstructive surgeon. I get a lot of tough wounds, tough problems. And uh, my, my first case on this was uh, was. Uh, fellow that was sent to me. This is kind of low tech, but if I give this, put this to the camera, I think most of will, will agree that this is an unsalvageable foot. Okay, and uh, in stage renal disease, and I didn't have anything to offer him from a reconstructive standpoint. However, uh, with I guess five or six treatments and no other reasonable wound care. Uh, we were able to salvage that that uh, foot and, and allow it to to bear weight, and it was uh, it was very surprising to me that we that we got there. Uh, this is this is kind of what we got with with only with only the shockwave, okay? And and basically, this shockwave device is a is a baby lithotripsy machine. And John didn't go into it, but but the way it, the way it kind of started, they were they were doing the kidney stones, and they were noticing on some some films on patients that had the, had their uh, lithotripsy done that one area of the pelvis would be much more dense in bone than the other side, and they put it together and said, well, you know, that's where that shock wave went through there, and that's when they started looking at what other effects the shock wave had on on soft tissue and, and other things like that. And it does uh, begin a cascade of wound healing, and uh, it's it's been described with uh, you know nitric oxide and stem cell delivery and and vascular growth uh, endothelial growth cells. Things are starting. In the meantime, I I had this machine and I've been doing more more trials in, in clinical situations that. Uh, I'm getting unexpected results, I'm getting results that are better than I could have gotten either with hyperbaric oxygen, which I'm a hyperbaric oxygen doctor. I, um, I've been treating difficult wounds. I'm on the, on the staff at Shepherd Center and have been treating uh, severe uh, pressure ulcers and, and then just lots of uh, wounds, surgical wounds, dehiscence. And the combination of, of what this, this has been given us, it's, it's gotten the attention of my colleagues. And so I, I carry this machine around and we've have been treating things like John uh, told you about the infected uh, circulatory support systems, the, the LVADs, the left ventricular assist device, and we have and particularly the drive line that powers these things have found that I can, uh, can get those to cool down and uh, had success with that. Well, I tell you, you may not know this, Dr. Mullins, but I'm an amputee myself. And when I see those <laughs> results right there, that means the world to me. The reason why is instead of hopping, that gentleman can still get around with his foot. Now, later down the road, the, the pain or something may get to him and he may want to, to lose his foot, may choose it, but then he, he would have time to build his body up and get ready for it. But all I can say is, uh, that type of result is amazing. Now, for the people that are seeing the software for the first time, how many treatments are you normally utilizing this for for a, for each individual? I know it varies, but on the on the rough rough guesstimate, and how many times do they got to come see you? 
Well, uh, you know, it's a mobile device, wherever we can get the machine to go. But normally, like that foot that I showed, that was probably not more than 10 or 12 treatments. And, and my colleagues, when I saved that foot, they, they, they sent me another one. They said, well, that's, that's what, it, well, yeah. what can you do with this one? Now, I don't know if you can tell what that is, but that's, uh, that's called a, a heparin-induced thrombocytopenia. And she was scheduled for above-the-knee amputation. But she had already had a above-the-knee amputation on the, of the other leg, and she was, this was, she was down literally to her last leg. She was otherwise an active person, but with about 12 treatments, I was able to save that to where she can walk on that. She's got something she can get out of her wheelchair and and pivot on. And that made a huge difference. And the only thing I can attribute it to is this shockwave therapy. This was like uh, probably 10 to 12 treatments. Well, I, I'm telling you, it's a life saving and it's a no, what I'm telling the VA and what I always let the VA and the DOD know that with the, we bring these products to them, it is cutting edge. And that right there is proof from the doctor showing exactly what type of results that are available. I'm going to go ahead and bring John back in because I know we got some roundtable type discussions that we wanted to have. John, you want to go ahead and add some more to it from, from things you saw? Yeah, this uh, is, is two different animals because one on the wound care, of course, we're excited about that. What we do best are the worst of the worst cases. Uh, we like to, you know, get that typical case too. We can show off of those. You know, a typical case might only be three to five. The, the dramatic cases, like you've seen, will take eight to ten treatments. But when you go back to pain, the pain protocol is two or three treatments with ninety-five percent success. The wounded warrior can get the same treatment that LeBron James is getting this week. We're treating LeBron every week for a high ankle sprain, uh, and Anthony Davis is getting treated every week. All the famous athletes treated. And the most once you use the machine, your cost to provide world-class care for the wounded warrior is it, probably only about $50 to $75, including capitalizing the machine, including the, the, the nurse's time, including all the, the, the follow-up. So uh, it's different for, for pain is much simpler and much fewer treatments than for the dramatic wound care cases. And as I said, the best athletes in the world get this device and the wounded warriors can get it uh, for pain and have 95% success for any and all pain. And we, we've proven at high level university uh, research centers that the mechanism of action for pain is it modulates inflammation. There's something called the toll-like three receptor pathway. It, a red swollen sports injury in the ankle or knee, the swelling and redness goes away immediately. The patient leaves the room 80% pain reduced on average after the first treatment. And, and oftentimes only one treatment is all you need. Uh, but it, it's a different mechanism of action for the, uh, for, for the wounds. It, it requires the stem cell uh, activation. That, that's the primary mechanism versus the inflammation modulation is how we handle the pain. So it's two different animals. So, well, but as an as an aside, they also get pain relief uh, when I'm doing this. Uh, it's 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 pretty impressive uh, what this uh, what this technology will do. I've got a patient now. He's a retired special ops uh, soldier that was working for a, a police department. Wound up taking a bullet in the face and uh, having a large stroke. And uh, in rehab, he's only like 35. And with one treatment, he'd been unable to. To move, he's he's hemiparetic because of the large stroke on one side of the brain. But after one treatment, he was able to get his arm up for the first time since the injury, and to extend it enough that he could, you know, almost get a spoon up to his mouth. And after the one treatment, he called me the next day. He said it was unbelievable. He was he was so so thrilled with this. And there are studies out there that are showing that in uh, in contracture, flexion contracture that you get in paralytics and stuff, that is probably equal to Botox. And in my opinion, it's uh, it's better than Botox. I think it lasts longer. Hey, can I, uh, John, I think that it, that maybe the highest and best use, and this really came to me for this audience, and John has a unique, uh, you know, he's a surgeon, and the most exciting thing that we're working on right now, and I imagine the VA has a ton of research money and, and actual funds, that the, the best and highest use of this, there's two, 2 million opioid addicts created each year just from the, uh, from the medication given prescribed post-surgery. And we have shown in two studies, John has a nice pilot study going, 
that when he actually was doing tummy tucks and, and interjected about him, I'm misspeaking. No, that's he, right. And he yeah. would treat, let it go. Can you tell that story? Because we think that well, we I, I, the pain meds required by treating post surgery. Anything that we do in a reconstructive nature, and the cosmetic to some degree, is going to require usually post-operative uh, analgesia, and a lot of times that's going to be opiates to, to be the most effective. And I think I've been successful in decreasing the number of refills I have to do on their uh, oxycodones uh, by treating the uh, the incision post-operatively, and um, I've been pretty been pretty pleased with that, and the patients are pleased with it. Not only are we getting decreased pain, but I'm convinced that I'm getting a better scar and better healing. Yeah, we, we have randomized study that, that, that showed that, that showed if you do post-surgical treatment, you can reduce the, the, reduce the, the amount of uh, pain meds, it accelerates healing, uh, it also gets rid of, reduces complications, and the visible scar is greatly reduced. So those four things. And the final thing that I think for the wounded lawyer uh, and all other VAs, would be the most exciting thing we're doing in the world right now. And once again, the, 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 this technology comes out of Germany and Austria. That's where it's been standard of care for 15 years. And in Austrian system, Austria only has 13 trauma centers. Uh, they also have, at every one of these trauma centers, uh, they, they have a spine trauma department. So all 13 spine trauma centers are doing our randomized control trial that we're using for the FDA. And based on a small pilot style and a bunch of animals trial, our, our hypothesis is if I can treat a spine trauma patient within 72 hours, we can reduce the either the level of uh, paralysis or even prevent paralysis in about 50% of the cases. Because paralysis, in, in, if it's not a total sever of the spinal cord, if you can even have 5% of your spinal cord maintained, you can have total recovery. And because of our ability to stop inflammation, to stimulate stem cells, uh, and all the other mechanisms that, do, and th th that we do, we knock swelling down right away. So it's the swelling that disrupts the final 5%. So we will be submitting for FDA approval within a year based on 13 trauma centers in Austria and Germany, our ability to reduce the total level of paralysis. So for the, you know, for the wounded warrior, that would be an exceptional opportunity. I, that we were exploring that at Walter Reed, and we continue to explore it with a researcher at Walter Reed named Vlad Oanta. That he's getting uh, nice funding from from the NIH to do a bunch of spinal research. So that's another opportunity that's exciting. Well, we're absolutely focused on getting our veterans that get injured off of pain medication. You know, we're working on a lot of different things here at Maintenance Veteran Medical. We have controls that catches folks that are, are utilizing drugs while they're working and things of that matter. Just spoke of that yesterday. Um, you know, I'm trying to put together a complete package so the veterans have these cutting edge technology. And Mr. Warlick and, and Dr. Mullins, this is absolutely mind blowing. I mean, all the things that this this product can do and how how easy it is to get around you know how many different things that one doctor can use this for i mean we have we just you know we needed to educate folks and i think we're doing a very good job of that um doc, dr mullins is there anything else that you would like to put out there you know we got a few more minutes here any any words that you would like to say about the product hey, well, I, I, could you give them that just 30 seconds on the covid project that we did at piedmont hospital I well, quickly. I uh, one of the things I do, of course, is wounds, and a lot of times in a, in a severe COVID patient like we had, a young man had lost circulation to his leg because he was he was on the ventilator and what we call ECMO, which is extracorporeal membranous oxygenization. Basically, he's on on heart bypass. We take the, the blood out of the, the the femoral artery and and oxygenate, put it back in the heart. Well, he lost he lost uh, circulation to the leg and had to do fasciotomies. And I was called in to manage these deep wounds. And one afternoon, we were we were losing this uh, young man. He was he was not he was on maximum ventilation, maximum ECMO, and under the umbrella of compassionate use, I was treating his his legs. I went up and treated his lungs uh, with a thousand fifteen hundred shocks. And you know, you could argue it may be coincidental, but he turned around, turned around. We got him off ECMO got him off the ventilator. Uh, but the main thing is up until that point, this had not been used on lungs. It was, uh, it was actually uh, said on the, on the thing, John, as you know, do not use on lungs. But these patients were getting bronchoscoped immediately afterward and we found that we were not damaging the lungs. And we're finding that, that the bronchoscope, that the COVID 
uh, COVID lung was, was, was showing some improvement. And so we started doing more. We have quite a series of treating the COVID lungs. And it was, um, it's just, just more, to, more to follow. I mean, I've, I've got other things I've treated. I've treated lymphedema. I've treated uh, Bell's palsy. And one of the things I'm finding is that, that it, it doesn't have to be acute. You don't have to start this immediately. You, I've had some patients that were insensate for over five years. And after treating this, they had a return of sensation. It was, uh, it, this is a very powerful technology. And I, I think we're just, you know, getting started with it. And if you don't mind, uh, Dr. Mullins, tell me, walk me through a brief uh, patient uh, like how how does it work from start to finish? What what are you doing? What are you doing as you are treating the patient? Well, it depends, of course, if the patient is 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 awake or or, or you know it comes in the office. But very often I'll, I'll get a consult and say, like a consult today, uh, would you uh, put shockwave treatment on this man's uh, legs that he's been on on pressors? And he's showing poor perfusion of both feet. And we think this would, would help. I, I demonstrated we've been able to help. And so I'll get a consult. I'll get a machine. I'll roll it over to the, to the hospital and plug it in, explain to the patient or his, whoever's there, uh, legal guardian, what we're planning. I'm always, it's, it's comforting to know that so far we have no downside. This. It's not been described anywhere of this thing causing any harm. And when you've got that, when you've got that hook of, of there being no, no, no history of causing any harm, well, then, then you have to answer the question, well, why not do it? And so and that puts me in a pickle, makes me busy sometimes for me to say, well, there's really no contraindication to doing this. And I've done it on just, just disasters and very, very ill patients. And, and, you know, I don't get 100% uh, by any means. It, it wouldn't be realistic. But I've had, had uh, enough successes that this is, uh, this is for real. And I'm, I'm still excited about it and still looking for different, different applications and uh, using a lot. I've had it for lymphedema. I had some amazing results from chronic lymphedema of 19 or 20 years that has been resolved after three treatments. And I don't have a full explanation. Lymphogenesis is described but it's uh, it's pretty remarkable. It, it is absolutely remarkable. And what state are you located in, doctor? I'm in Georgia, in Atlanta, Georgia. Beautiful. Well, uh, you know, the VA is down there and I got contacts down there. I'm going to try to get them uh, to do some in-servicing and, and just uh, to learn about this product. But we're going to do this nationwide. But uh, it's great that you're right there in Atlanta. And, uh, you know, I just want to say thank you so much for your time today. Uh, you didn't have to do this by no means, but we appreciate you being here and letting everybody hear it from your uh, from your side. And we just appreciate you. So I hope you have a wonderful day today. OK. OK, thank you. Thank you for having me. So, John, uh, we got a few minutes here. Any last words from your side? Now, just to uh, respond to that last question, a typical pain patient is 10 minutes or less. A typical wound care patient, because the number of shocks in a larger area, might be 15 or 20 minutes. Uh, the device looks like an ultrasound machine. It looks like an ultrasound probe, and uh, it's, it's about the same size. Uh, for, for wounds, there is no pain. Uh, it, it, and if it was painful, the pain goes away after the treatment in addition. But uh, when you're targeting an acute injury or even chronic pain, it's slightly uncomfortable for about five minutes, but 85% of the patients are greatly pain reduced when they walk out the door after their first treatment and swelling and redness is gone. So it's, it, it, it almost holds it, it's like an ultrasound probe, except it's pulse down ways. You hear an audible pop, 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 pop. And, uh, and, and, and the three mechanisms, once again, are, it, it modulates inflammation, it activates resident stem cells, and it's usually antibacterial and antiviral. So between that combination, our biggest difficulty is trying to decide what not to use it for. <laughs> and that's a beautiful thing. And we spoke earlier. We, I knew that today's live stream was going to be about 30 minutes, but I would like to down the road a month or so uh, do maybe a live demonstration. If we can set that up, I will, uh, you know, if we can just let people see. But if not, um, it, it's all good. They understand. Now, that'd be very right. easy. Yes, we, it's very, very simple. And it's, uh, it's, it's very. Yeah, we'd love to do that. Well, Thank you for the opportunity. Oh, it's all good. So everybody that's watching this, share this out far and wide. These are type of the technology that you don't hear about. They're 
they're just getting going, but they are changing the world. And with my big mouth from Snow Camp, North Carolina, I'm going to let our veterans know. I'm tired of waiting five years for folks to, uh, to get new technology. We don't have to do that anymore. I'm a proud SDVOSB, Service Disabled Veteran Owned Small Business, and I am uh, I am tish I I'm Softwave uh, Tissues. SDVOSB exclusive. So you call me, I will get you directly in touch with John. I, if you need to speak to the doctor, if he's willing, I'll try to get you with him and we will get you whatever you need to make this successful. That's the way we work. Um, maintenance better medical has never been about the money. We're about making sure that things are done right. And by doing it the right way, everything comes into place. I'm successful. Everybody's successful. It's not about success that way. It's about getting these technologies to our veterans. So, um, John, I appreciate your time today, and I hope you have a wonderful day. Yeah, and Jonathan, I'd also like to invite uh, Senator Max Cleveland, who'd love to be on. He, he's a great guest. So uh, we, we treat him once a month because he only has one limb, and it is horribly painful. So we treat him monthly for his shoulder injury, and uh, it, 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 it makes his life bearable. So he would love to come on too. If, if you do want to give an invitation to him, I'd love to get him here. He's a, he's a great storyteller. Please, uh, please come on next time we do it. We will do this next month because there is so much information here that we need to go over and dig deeper in. But today, again, is the overview. And I think we've done a great job with that. Um, again, everyone email the One Leg Bandit at Manus Federal Medical with any questions. Um, if you have any comments, put them in the comments and I will re return uh, back to you and subscribe at Jonathan Manus YouTube uh, or follow me on LinkedIn here to keep getting these uh, these great uh, updates about these new products. So uh, thank yeah, you. And our veterans deserve to get the same care that LeBron James and Anthony Davis get every day. And this One is the same, team, same protocols. Uh, they're treated, you know, once a week with our device and our veterans deserve the same thing. 100. That's what I fight for every single day. So thank you for, for that. And uh, we appreciate you, John. Have a wonderful day. Thank you for the invite. So everyone, again, just changing the world today. Absolutely changing the world. And um, it's been a great broadcast broadcast. Tomorrow is Friday. We are going to kick it back a little bit and, and relax. Uh, tomorrow we have Marlia Alpers talking about her wine business and um, how small businesses is growing uh, out there. And, you know, I'm going to interject uh, all my knowledge about federal contracting and just kick back a little bit and relax. So please tune in for that tomorrow at 345. If you have any veterans um, that you want to nominate, we're doing a, a little giveaway there. So please just check that out. Uh, get the weekend started right with me tomorrow at 345. And I hope you all have a wonderful day. And uh, the One Leg Bandit is out. Talk to you later.